Good afternoon and a very warm welcome from the Mother Grid Studio. My name is Markus Wilmsmann and I have a very special guest invited for this evening. Let's talk about hooking up media controllers to lighting consoles and this is just the beginning, I can promise. And I'm connected now to Ricardo Diaz in Portugal who will tell us everything we want to know about his baby show cockpit. Hello Ricardo. Hello Marcus and thanks for your invitation. It's very grateful to be to be here with you. You're very welcome, Ricardo. Where are where are uh, where in Portugal are you located right now? I'm I'm now based near Porto, so it's in the north of Portugal, uh, near the shore. So I'm by the sea now. Oh, okay. And still, you find time to sit around in your little laboratory and uh, develop uh, things like show cockpit. Let's <laughs> <laughs> let's talk a bit uh, about you, your your background first. You told me that you uh, you were a lighting designer before the pandemic and will hopefully be one again after the pandemic is over. But you're not only a lighting designer, but uh, also uh, uh, an engineer for robotics. Uh, yeah, so I come from a background of electronics and telecommunications. I'm finishing the, the PhD in artificial intelligence for robotics, but I have this lifelong passion for lighting design. I, I don't consider myself a full-time lighting designer, uh, but I, I did a few shows as a, as a designer and operator. Uh, and combining what I know in software, I try to create solutions and bring technology into into live shows as well. Okay, and maybe one uh, hint for all viewers outside now: help me ask uh, Ricardo questions, post your questions, your comments. If you're already working with Show Cockpit and you're happy with it, post it. If you're unhappy with it, don't post it and go to Ricardo. No, just kidding. All comments are welcome. Uh, Get into it. Yeah, Ricardo. And, and what was your, your initial uh, idea or what, what was the moment when you, when you knew, oh, I have to develop something uh, like Show Cockpit? And second question would be, what is Show Cockpit exactly? Yeah, so I, I, I did prepare uh, a few slides, if you, if you don't mind that I, that I share the, those now. Yeah, sure. Marcus? Yes. Yep. So uh, when I was... Uh, A young, a young teenager, I, I was working as a volunteer in a very, very small local company um, in audiovisual, mainly in lighting. And in 2012, more or less, uh, the first moving ads arrived and I had to, to, to deal with them. And so the, the 24 channel DMX controller was not enough. And I, I was using Freestyler and using some of my knowledge in, in electronics to build the USB to DMX interface. Uh, and then I discovered this amazing software by uh, Martin back then called MPC. And soon it became apparent that I, I needed something to control physically. So you, you, we always, uh, we always uh, want to have haptic feedback. So you can control with faders and buttons and not using your mouse. So this, is the, this was really the beginning of the first project that I uh, launched. I had this MIDI device at home, the BCF2000, and I've created uh, an application to translate from these MIDI uh, commands into OSC commands that would trigger MPC. And this is a very, very early version of MPC tools. It was the first application that I, I launched publicly. Um, and I, I, I did it for free because I, I needed it for me, but I, I released it. And soon, people started asking to add features to it, to, for example, integrate with other MIDI devices other than the, the BCF2000, um, and integrating joysticks, and then can you please do something to find fixtures that look alike, and soon the application started growing, and it didn't take that long for people to also ask for something similar for other desks, such as the MA2, so that's how the second project started, Grand MA2 Tools. It's essentially the same. It allowed people to connect MIDI devices to MA2. And then people asked for .2, HOG, Avalite. And at some point, I was a, a, a small developer working alone, and I, I needed to maintain all these projects in parallel. And that's when I decided to step back a bit and do something that's Uh, more flexible and that will allow anyone to integrate multiple devices with multiple uh, softwares and desks uh, in a modular way. And that's, 
that that's what show cockpit is so it's basically a a cook of the the mother mpc tools and the father gma2 tools plus a few ingredients uh it's it's show cockpit so here we are in, in 2021 in more than 80 countries, more than 40K downloads and 6K registrations. Uh, and uh, the whole idea for Show Cockpit, the whole concept is a modular software application that provides a smooth integration between show elements. Um, well, you might be asking what kind of devices you can, you can use. Um, yes, yes, uh, I would. <laughs> So we divide this in, into these groups. We provide um, drivers or modules. We call them drivers for common protocols such as MIDI, OSC, timecode, DMX, HTTP, Ableton Link. We also provide drivers for physical devices like your regular keyboard, uh, joystick or gamepad, the well-known Stream Deck, Open DMX if you want to output DMX out of show cockpit, um, specific MIDI devices, trackballs, etc. And on the top, you'll see the, the four groups of lighting, video, audio, and effects. And for those, we have a bunch of drivers for the most well known lighting consoles, uh, video software such as OBS and VMix, Resolume Arena, etc. We've got a few for audio and effects. We we have plans to integrate more in the future, in the in the in the shortcoming future, um, and we basically drive this um, development by user feedback. So we've got a poll. Uh, people vote for the features that they need, and and that's how I uh, we basically decide what to what to do next. There are also a few other interesting drivers such as a driver for companion so that opens up a lot of possibilities if you know companion it can trigger a lot of video servers it, it comes from a, a video uh, a video area so you can use show cockpit to integrate with your midi device uh, or your stream deck and trigger a companion you can use qlab we also have a full-fledged lua scripting engine inside show cockpit it allows you to create uh, if this then that kind of logic or have some background worker that's checking values and assigning um, and triggering functions on other elements we all, we have counters timers etc so all you see here are modules that you can add to your project and you can link them the way you want that's the main idea okay great and for which users, uh, what what was your original idea? For which users did you develop that? Is it for, for pro users or for, 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 for hobby lighting designers? Uh, who should uh, be interested now in taking a deeper look at uh, Chow Cockpit? So we've got, the I think, the, the whole range of uh, clients. So we, we, we got clients that do not have the money to to buy a, a light a full lighting desk and they want to start experimenting and having the the faders and the buttons to program at home we have uh, professional lighting designers that do have desks and do use the full fledged desks on touring but they want something to program while they are at the hotel for example we have fixed installations um again Seeing the, the history and where uh, Show Cockpit comes from, I, I think it came from uh, the, same, the same motto as me, so I needed something to control uh, the, um, the, the lighting desk while I didn't have the, the full desk. Uh, but now it, it came to a point where we have a bunch of companies that are also using it daily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what are the reactions of the lighting console manufacturers? Um, are they happy with your efforts or do they say, ah, no, um, we would be more happy if the people would buy our consoles and not some MIDI show cockpit software solution? How, how is that's, that? That's a very, very interesting question. Uh, so from the beginning and from, from the MPC tools days, before I released it, I was aware that this could be seen as a way to... Um, well, instead of buying the, the real hardware, they would buy MIDI and 
use something else. So before releasing, I asked for permission for it, and, and that that has been my uh, that has been my my behavior since since the beginning. It became clear from the first projects that this was a way for people for the the early adopters to to start using the lighting console. It it's not a substitute for a full fledged lighting console at all. Uh, it can be used along with it, as as I have a few examples to to show you next. People are using the the real hardware, the official hardware, along with show cockpit because they 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 have some some kind of need for extra buttons or a fixed installation that they want they don't want the user the end user to see the the, the full desk. Okay. You have a very great, uh, I think you have several testimonials, but one is from famous lighting designer Christian Jackson. What did he <laughs> say? Uh, what did he say about jo about show cockpit? Uh, yeah, Christian is a, is a, is an old friend. He he used MPC tools back in the days, and now he's our, he's our customer in in show cockpit. He's, in in his last testimonial, he said that show cockpit is like a multi tool. Uh, you don't use it in every show, but it doesn't go to a show without it. Okay. Yeah. Nice words. Yeah. You had. You said you have some uh, some more examples on, about yeah. how uh, to use Shockpit. Let's have a look at this. At them. I do. Uh, so a few user um, projects. The um, I guess one of the most common uh, uses for for this application is to to use a MIDI device with uh, the lighting. Um, software in this case it's MA2. You can see that there's the, the, the command wing and the fader wing along with uh, an APC Mini. And if you've if you've gone to, through the trouble of setting up these devices officially and directly with uh, with MA, you know that you cannot connect more than one, and it's uh, you have to do all the MIDI mapping manually. In Show Cockpit is basically plug and play because we have the driver for the the device. Show cockpit knows how to talk to the device and knows how to talk with MA2, and you just link the two really easily. Here is a similar uh, situation for for Campsys. Campsys is a is a is a nice um, example of. You need the hardware to unlock the communication to 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 the so, to the software, so you cannot use show cockpit if you don't buy the the official hardware. Uh, here is a full uh, custom lighting setup. It, it even includes uh, an old DMX, 24 channel DMX <laughs> desk. And he's using two Novation lounge pads, uh, one X Touch and one of these controllers to control Obsidian Onyx. Here we have uh, a user with several MIDI devices controlling two things. Uh, using these devices, he can control the lighting software and the video uh, resolume arena at the same time and as you can see we've got the the drivers for the these devices that have full midi uh, rgb feedback on the on the button leds so that allows uh, users to do things like this one so there's a cue list running this is a midi craft device which has rgb leds and the cue list appearance resembles what's happening on stage this you cannot do this with a with a common wing <laughs> mm -hmm. but it, there's a there's something on the on the ma2 that's changing the appearance on the executor and that is automatically mapped back to the to the device by show cockpit if you map a stream deck button to ma2 for example you will see a representation of the executor with all uh, with all the three queues and the progress bar when the queue is fading in, for example, you will see all that in the buttons. Generate this is generated by by Show Cockpit again. You can use Show Cockpit as a regular timecode translator, so you you can do this via software. And using Show Cockpit, you can translate from LTC to MTC and vice versa. Uh, I'm not sure if the uh, our audience is all aware of what Ableton Link is. Uh, maybe, maybe I can... Yeah, maybe you can give us a brief explanation. So a Ableton, is a, Ableton Link is a protocol developed by Ableton. Um, it's mostly used in uh, EDM shows, as far as I know. But it's basically a network protocol that allows multiple devices in the network to synchronize phase 
and tempo. So if your DJ that's playing live changes the tempo and you want your effects in lighting to stay synchronized, here is a solution. Uh, Show Cockpit listens for, for the Ableton link and triggers the learn button on the ME2. So you always have the video and the lighting always in sync with what's happening in real time on, on your stage. Some users have gone, uh, well, far, much farther uh, than I expected. <laughs> they created their own lighting consoles, uh, full custom lighting consoles. Uh, and this one is one of my favorites. Uh, Edward Hansen from, from Germany created this um, remote follow spot system. He attached the camera to a, a Mac Viper. And using Show Cockpit, he was controlling this Mac Viper with a joystick. So you, you can see that in this event, this was a, a, a long event and they didn't want to have someone up there uh, doing the follow spot. So they created uh, with show cockpit, they have this joystick, which controls the pan and tilt of the, um, of the Mac Viper. So you've got, a, you've got a follow spot system and using the buttons, he also um, controls intensity, zoom and other kind of parameters. Nice. Finally, as I mentioned before, um, we've got this Lua scripting engine. It's, for, it's more for the geek users, maybe, or users that like to program or do something, some things that are more advanced. Um, I can show you this later. I, I, I'm not going to talk too much about it now, and unless we have uh, specific questions for it. But it allows you, for example, to auto-populate your playbacks in your... In your um, in your lighting desk, it can read, for example, the Reaper markets, uh, Reaper markers, and create your queue list with all the queues uh, and the queue names that are equal to your Reaper markets. And in time, so you only have to program next. Uh, it also can mimic user behavior, like fading in, uh, sequential actions like clicking buttons and uh, rotating encoders. Uh, you can you can do this in a script. You can execute it, and it, it will execute it for you. Uh, here is an example of a show file automation on a Kempsey's desk. Uh, Guillaume is using um, a Lua script that asks for the group numbers. Um, and when he clicks OK, you will see the Kempsey's desk executing in sequence lots of comments, and it's generating all the color presets and combinations of color presets for him. Nice. I'd also like to show this fun mode. <laughs> this is the, the mode that you use to impress your friends uh, with your custom setup. If you have one, you can basically show text on your MIDI devices. And to I guess to 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 end this, uh, I'd also like to to tell that now we have a we have a team of uh, uh, skilled people um, that's working not only in providing these drivers for Show Cockpit to to upgrade it, but also we we work directly with our uh, users to create custom solutions for their needs. So we can create custom drivers that work in Show Cockpit for them. Uh, we create standalone applications too, and even custom hardware if if they want. And this is a, a picture of uh, Andre Silva in a in a, an a in an arena show. We've got a um, a custom driver, so you can see Resolume here, uh, the ME2 desk, and the show cockpit was also listening for timecode input, and it was giving warnings for the main LD to to tell the people that were running the motors to start to prepare and to start raising the trusses, um, lowering the trusses, et cetera. And this was very well timed and we had show cockpit to, to tell him what to do at every time. Okay. And finally, uh, also a custom driver for Ultra Europe Music Festival. Um, I don't know if everyone is aware of the, the pyro and effects uh, logistics in festivals, uh, but one, in one interesting thing is that each artist only has a certain number of confetti shots or CO2 time 
to to spare. It depends on what they pay for. And the company that was running the, the, the pyro for some of these artists used show cockpit to have a stream deck connected to the um, connected to the MA2 desk. And on the stream deck, it, they basically could give the stream deck to the person that was traveling with the with the DJ that was firing the effects. And on the stream deck, they would see a representation of what the effect they, uh, they, they were going to see and also how much time left or how many uh, shots they had left for that effect. So they could manage throughout, the, throughout the, the show, they could manage when they want to use and how much they want to use to, to, for, 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 for each effect. And that's it, that's what I had prepared. I guess we still have a lot of time for questions. <laughs> Yeah, at least we could see the countless possibilities now. At the Ultra Music Festival, was there also some some kind of uh, calculator who calculated? Oh, yeah, I mean, now you you press buttons for two hundred euros, or no? Then now you have press <laughs> buttons for five hundred euros. <laughs> no, we didn't have that. So because they they basically hired uh, before, we we knew how many shots. But you could do that and display that also on the stream deck. That's a very nice suggestion. <laughs> yeah, maybe that you can insert your credit card if you run out of shots. Then <laughs> why not? Why not? We have one question from Joshua Maxwell, and nice. he wants to know: uh, Is there any plans for an etc EOS driver at the moment? Yeah, sure. So in our users group, uh, which have the link here on a, on a, on the on the presentation, uh, we have a poll, uh, and people are voting for what they want to be developed next. We try to uh, to deal with development in a way that we prior prioritize what users want most. So, uh, Joshua, please ask your EOS friends to vote in there. So we ramp up a bit the EOS driver, and we get it we get it out sooner than later. Okay. Are you in close contact with all the manufacturers? I know, for example, I had problems uh, uh, connecting uh, MidiCraft, for example, Alexander's MidiCraft to show cockpit to my Onyx console. And then we were, in the end, we were three people looking at it. Everything worked out fine. It was me in the end. Um, but are you in close contact with, with other, other manufacturers or, or developers? Yeah, I, I try to. So before the pandemic, uh, I, I used to travel to ProLight and Sound in Germany, in Frankfurt, and I I, I have contacts in, all over the the industry. In fact, the first year that I launched Show Cockpit, I was invited by Elation, uh, that um, brought the Onyx from from Martin, uh, and and we had a booth there with Show Cockpit and their own consoles. So I try to, to be in contact with, with the manufacturers because, as you know, some of the development requires hardware and it's, it's not easy for me to get all this hardware that I don't actually need after I uh, develop the, um, the driver. So there are, there are occasions where the, where the manufacturers send me the, the hardware to develop the, the drivers, for example. So, yeah. Okay. And are there any plans for, for products, not only software? For example, this follow spot system from Edward Hansen could be a, could be a nice idea. Or do you say no, no? I, I'll stay with uh, I'll stick with uh, software. This whole hardware thing should belong to other people, like Alex Mikkel from Medicraft, for example. Yeah, at this point, we are not thinking about uh, going that way. Um, we would like to develop the, the, the software even further than we have. So we have a lot of ideas for, for this software that we still need to, to make true before we get into that. So as you know, hardware development is a lot more difficult, in my opinion, because I come from software. So it, 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 looks like, uh, uh, it looks like it's a lot more difficult and with uh, many procedures that are different from software that we would need to... We would need to to be aware of before we, we go that way. Mm -hmm. And in general, is show cockpit your, your, your full-time job or do you still work? Also, you have your, uh, your made your degree in uh, robotics engineering, which sounds yeah. like you could make a lot of money as a robotics engineer. I, I'm not sure about it, but uh, are you on the way to earn a living with, with show cockpit or what's the situation financial wise? 
No, so uh, as a full-time job, I'm now working for, as a software engineer for Vista by Chroma Q. So that's my full-time job, and I'm I'm doing the I'm doing this I'm continuing with this uh, show cockpit project along with uh, other people to 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 continue this further. Um, I would say that I could do a lot more uh, money working for for the robotics field, but I wouldn't be as happy, I guess, because this. When you work with the, what you are passionate uh, about, it, it becomes easy to forget about how much time you spend uh, developing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in the end, you would end up uh, developing soldier robots, like they can be seen <laughs> on YouTube very often no. from, from Boston Dynamics. A bit uh, spooky, I think. No, no, no. I can assure you that the Terminator is still a long way to, to, to reach. We are, we are a long way before we get a Terminator <laughs> out there. That's good to hear. I will take a look if there are any more questions. Otherwise... Uh, I also have a, a, a live demo if you want. So if there are no questions, I can show you the application and yes. show you what, yeah, what why I'm not? using I mean, here. We have, we have a bit of time. Um, go for it, yeah. Yeah? So what I, what I have here is the, is the, the show cockpit application. You can see that I already have two elements here. This is the Elgato Stream Deck that I have plugged here. So this is what I have in front of me. I have the, the Elgato here and the uh, an X Touch to play with if if we want. And I'm using I'm using the Stream Deck to trigger a function in OBS that's controlling what you are seeing now. And what can we do with this? So we can um you can see that when you select the the element there are a bunch of options that in this uh in this example i already have um configured and if you click the link between them you come to this mapping window and you will see all the functions that you can trigger in this case in obs and all the controls of our device in this case of the elgato stream deck so um I don't know. I would ask our audience what they want me to do. I have, uh, I have, uh, GrenMA running here as well. So if you want, if we want to experiment a bit with uh, GrenMA. Yes. Any suggestions? Yep. Be the first to control an original grandma on PC via the internet using show cockpit. Why not? So Volunteers up front. <laughs> also, uh, while we wait for uh, for suggestions, I will do a very small example, which is controlling uh, uh, controlling one, let's say, one executor button with one of these buttons here on the stream deck. Yeah, great. So the first thing we need to do, because we already have the Elgato Stream Deck element in the project, we will need to add the ME2 element there. So click the Add button, write ME2, enter, give it a name. Now we need to configure it using the remote user that I have previously created in my show file. Click here to connect, and now we have the element connected to run ME2. And now if we want to do something uh, in MA2 via the Stream Deck, we just need to create a link between these two elements. And we are brought back to that mapping element screen. You select, for example, the executor button. And we want to control executor number one, button number one, for example. This is the, the buttons are, uh, the button numbers are one for this one, one, two, and three. And this is the executor one. So that's what we want for, for example, this button here. So the first, the first button here on the bottom row. Click here, and if we come back to elements, you already see a representation of the, the sequence that I have assigned there. Ah, now, now I get it. The, 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 the Elgato looked like a, a, a part of the, of the bearing of the <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask. Okay. No, 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 it's a different device. <laughs> I just don't have tabletop space for everything. <laughs> no problem. I'm trying to save tabletop space and screen space. 
Oh, we have another question coming in from Andrea Koller. Oh, uh, I can read it to you, but uh, yeah, for, I, sure. I don't get it. Was it difficult to implement the LTC driver in C? I tried generating real-time LTC using Java without success. Top much overhead. We've got a geek user here. I like those questions. Uh, so yeah, that's Over. a de development question. Uh, it's not really related to show cockpit, more to how I implemented the LTC um, driver. No uh, problems. All questions are allowed. Just go I, for it. I don't. I don't think we have time to discuss this question. To be <laughs> to be honest, but uh, please, Andrea, feel free to send me a, a, an email, and we will discuss it via via email because. It goes a little bit out of uh, out of the scope of the of the live stream today. Okay, so Andrea, please get in touch with Ricardo. You find the all you need on the show cockpit side. And yes, um, what I'm wondering is what are the advantages of uh, using show cockpit to connect Elgato and OBS? Because there are a few uh, preferences already in the Elgato software that you can mm -hmm. control OBS with. So why should I use Shockbit? Do I have more possibilities then? Uh, so uh, in short, yes. Um, if you only want to use your Elgato to control OBS, just go with the, with the, with the official one. So it, it works, it does what you want. You don't, need, you don't need show cockpit for that. But if you want to do something like this, and if you see here now, I'm controlling OBS on the first row, but this button over here is controlling MA2, you will not be able to have both uh, show cockpit and the official software connected at the same time. So you will need to use show cockpit um, to control OBS and MA2 at the same time. Okay, yeah, perfectly clear. Then we have another question from Alex MI. I think this is Alexander Mikkel from MediCraft. You tuned in. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Hi, Alex. Can you make <laughs> storing to a button of a MIDI controller work with show cockpit and MA? Yeah, uh, so um, this is a this is an interesting question because um, specifically for the MA2 driver, we are connecting to MA2 via the web remote. So the thing that you see on the browser, if you open the browser and enable the web remote, we are basically emulating what the user does on the web view. So what? But this is this is like an abstraction because you don't see it. And when you, when you assign a store button on one of these buttons, uh, you are essentially clicking store on the web remote. And then people don't realize that, but they are starting the comment on the web remote and they want to end the comment on, on PC. And that's not, that's not possible. So the only way to do that is via the MIDI remote inputs. So if you want to really trigger this button here, uh, on the, the store button here, you will need to configure your MIDI remotes on, uh, on MA2, and you will, connect, um, you will connect that MIDI remote via show cockpit with the MIDI output. So add the MIDI output element. Let's say you create, um, okay, I will, I will use here another, another software called Loop MIDI. This software here, it allows you to create virtual MIDI devices inside your computer. And this is because I'm running all uh, in the same computer. I would need to connect MA2 to this virtual device and I will connect my MIDI output to one of these MIDI ports, which is the virtual device. And now we can use, let's, well, let's let's use the 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 X touch now. I'll add the X touch element. Here it is. Connect to it. Um, I will connect to the Grand MA2 for for example an executor fader, and we will see that when we move when we move the fader, we see the signal being flow between the X touch and the MA2 element. And if we check on MA2, we are also controlling the first executor. And it, in this case, it also goes both ways. So if you change on MA or if you change pages, it will also change on your device. In this particular one, because as um, motorized faders. Um, so the initial question was the store button. 
in this case, let's say we want to we want to use this button as a store one. So we will link the Behringer to MIDI output and we send a MIDI note. We select the pitch that we want, the velocity and the channel, and we, we use this button here. So now what's happening is when you click this button, this is triggering this function on MIDI output, and this MIDI output is sending, in this case, on channel one, velocity 127 with pitch zero to this virtual output device. And now, now what's left, I'm not going to show you, but what's left is to configure in MA2 your MIDI remote input to get that data and trigger the store button. And this is the best way to, to, to have similar functionality as you would have with the common wing. Okay, cool, great. Yeah, oh, now, now the, the questions are rolling. The next one nice. is from Marco Salomon, who wants to know, is it perhaps possible to fake blinking of LED buttons with only on-off LEDs? Uh, does he mean to blink LEDs, uh, real LEDs, an LED fixture, an LED on this button? I'm not really understanding the question. Yes, maybe may Marco, you can uh, be a more bit more specific. Yeah. Is it perhaps possible to fake blinking of LED buttons with only on-off LEDs? Hmm. Oh, I see what he means now. So uh, if you, yeah. So let let's map something else here be between the X Touch and the Grand MA2. I'm also uh, going to map these three buttons here. These are the executor buttons, and if you see this icon over here, it says that there's feedback coming from MA, which is going to be feedback back to the controllers that you map to it. So this will be executor number one button one, executor number one button two, and executor number one button three. So now if you come back, we will see the uh, feedback coming back from what you see on the on the on the ME2. So whenever this is running, all these buttons will light up. Uh, you you would see something similar on, on a common wing, for example. If I understand correctly, what Marco is asking is if uh, we could make this button blink by software. So instead of it being stopped, it would blink. Not with the X Touch. There are a few devices that have this natively. So we don't do it in, in, in show cockpit, but if the device allows, for example, the, the APC40 that I have here allows to do it in your feedback settings, you set that to be flash, a flashing uh, light and it will flash. In terms of making a, a button that is only on off a, f a flashing one, uh, we currently don't support that. Okay. Then next question from Mickey Reed. Have you found a way to control multiple MIDI controllers with different device ID on Onyx OSC? Is the question from Mickey Reed. Yeah, um, that would take a while to reply, uh, to be honest. There's a way, uh, and it involves uh, setting up multiple IP addresses for your loopback network adapter. If that didn't make sense, Please go to the our Onyx group, our sorry, our users group in Facebook. There's already a thread uh, explaining what steps you need to follow uh, to to make that work. And I, uh, we are preparing a, a video just for that because uh, soon we will have a tutorial to 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 help you configure that. Okay, so Mickey, I hope this helps. A video is in the factory. Will come out soon for exactly your case. Then we have Andrea Koller again. Uh, did you collaborate with MA when developing the MA driver or was it just reverse engineering? Uh, there wasn't really the reverse engineer because the protocol is pretty open. Uh, in, in the case of MA, no, there, there was no collaboration. Uh, I would say neither MA, not, not any other manufacturer because we tend to use uh, open protocols and open interfaces that the the manufacturer provides. So if, if they provide an interface, we are basically going to uh, implement it. Okay. So no, not, not really. Reverse engineering. 
So, the Bassfly has also a question. Are there any plans for integration of record box link data like the show control software or is this hard to implement? Uh, it's always a question of um, priorities, not a question of being hard or easy. As long as it's doable, we will eventually get to that. In fact, uh, as far as I know, that's the most uh, requested feature now in, in our users group on the poll that I mentioned early, earlier. So this is something that we are actively working on. We are implementing the TCNet protocol that should be out in one of the future releases. So you will be able to use the show control software and get time code out of it. Okay, great. Yeah, and that was it question-wise now. Okay. Uh, if there are any more questions, please pose them now because we are steadily but slowly running out of time as today at 8 p.m. we will have uh, the next series of Rock the Hawk, which I do together with Rocket Chris, and he's teaching me how to use the, the Hawk form at 8 p.m. for German-speaking uh, people only, unfortunately. But if you understand it, you can tune in on Twitch. So I will take a look at the comment section again. No, no, that... There's nothing more. Any wishes on uh, what you would like to control on the MA? No, I think people are a bit shy today, Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> I will show you a, a different a different thing now. Um, I have here a, a Rosendahl a MIF4. Uh, it's a time code box that has input and output of a MIDI time code via USB and um, LTC via audio audio cable balanced audio cable and I've I've added here uh, an MTC input uh, I will connect to the to the MIF4 I will enable it and I will start the generator on the device because the device can convert but can also generate it will start at our four start and you will see the the time code running here now and there are uh, a few things that you can do with this uh, why don't we uh, experiment a bit with the with the Lua scripting? Because many people seem to be afraid of it. It's not that difficult. What do you think, Marcus? Hmm. Yeah, we have we have a couple minutes. If you can manage this in a couple minutes, yeah. Then yeah, okay. So I'll try to display the time code here in the in the in the stream deck. Okay. Yeah. Um, because we only have a few minutes, I will load uh, a previously show file that I did earlier today. So connect the Elgato, connect the OBS. Yep. Okay. And here I have the MTC in, connected to the MIF. And then there is this Lua script. And what this Lua script is doing, don't be afraid of it. It gets a handle for the other elements. Then you get the value of the time code from the MTC input element. You get different variables for uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And here we are calling functions from on the Elgato to display all these variables in, in these buttons here. So if I make it run now, hmm. It's giving me an error. Well, I just tried it uh, before, and for some reason, it's not working. Yeah, that's always the well, thing. Well, I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. Uh, I could uh, show you that. For some reason, it's not working. We just found a bug. <laughs> that's something I'm going to fix soon. Okay, but sorry. Yes, but uh, our savior is once again Marco Salomon, who has another question for you. This okay. will be the last one for today. Um, and this is, uh, will the Titan driver be updated, perhaps, once uh, Marco Salomon wants to know that? So, yeah, we, we had discussions with, with Marco, because um, the, the desk that I had available was a quartz desk. Um, and it seems that in his desk, it's not working the same way. So yeah, we have to look into options to, to see what's, what's going on in, in, in your particular case, or if we need to update to a newer Titan version, uh, we will need to, to manage that. But yeah, we, we always try to 
to keep the drivers up to date, although there are already many and a few are getting behind. Uh, but yeah, feel free to, to, to shout out in, in the group, to feel free to send us an email uh, that will keep us uh, uh, in, the, in the loop of updating the devices that people are actually using. Okay, and I just uh, inserted the link into the YouTube uh, live chat now, the mm -hmm. link to the group. I will do that soon in Facebook too. In the Mother Grid live stream, who's watching now via Veranstaltungstechnik News has to come over. And then we have one more remark from Marco for PC users. You can currently use MIDI output driver and then map triggers in Avolites. New beta just tested, but would like to use triggers within Avolites. Yes. Okay, so you, you want to use Avolites to trigger something on show cockpit, as far as I can tell. Is that it? No, I'm not sure. For PC users, you can currently use MIDI output driver and then map triggers in Avolites. I think this is not a question, but more a general remark. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was great. We had uh, lots of questions. Thanks to all our, out there uh, for taking part in this live stream. And especially, Ricardo, thank you very much for sharing uh, thank you. a lot of information with you. I posted the link to the show cockpit group where there are the polls for products and stuff if you want to get involved in the direction show cockpit is heading to take part in the polls and your console might be next <laughs> yes <laughs> ricardo then good luck for all your efforts uh and if there is another pro light coming next year or whatever uh you will Let's be there meet. people can get in touch with you and have longer discussions about lua and software than we can deal this year in our tiny little live stream thank you very much that was ricardo diaz who gave thank us you. very deep insights into show cockpit the overall software to control everything with everything and thank you yes and for those of you who are interested in a german speaking introduction to the hawk i introduce now to step over to twitch look there for mother grid magazine and at 8 p.m there will be the next series of rock the hawk with rocket chris and me For now, I'm saying goodbye, tuning over to the uh, to the outro, saying once again, thank you to Ricardo, and then we're off. No, goodbye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Marcus. <laughs>